Hey, what's up, guys? John here. Inflation is about to get out of control in this country. Inflation rose by more than expected in March by 0.4 percent, and it's up 3.5 percent since this time last year. The typical American household spends $1,000 per month more from three years ago. Reminiscent of what has been seen in Venezuela and other countries that were once great and then have later fallen. Now here in America, we're walking into this $40,000 tax per household. This is a situation that is ramping up and growing quickly. The tax increase is part of Biden's $7.3 trillion budget plan for fiscal 2025. Unprecedented $86.6 trillion in spending over the next decade. And there's $4.9 trillion in just tax hikes alone. Now, remember just a few years ago, if you made $100,000 a year, you know, you were considered upper middle class. That was kind of the, the barometer of success, hitting $100,000 a year. Now, in many cities, $100,000 is lower middle class. Can you imagine what that would look like with what they're walking us into right now? I believe that in the next two years, three years, making two hundred fifty dollars or $300,000 a year would be considered lower middle class. And it's not my opinion. I'm gonna show you what is already happening so you can position yourself and your family in accordance with reality. You know, a lot of people don't wanna talk about what's really going on, what's really happening in our economy. But if you start to connect the dots and you start seeing fact after fact after fact, and then you ignore that and say, you know what, that's not gonna happen. I personally think that is a, uh, it's a handicap on reality and it's preventing people from seeing things from how they really are, preventing people from making smart, well-informed decisions based on the reality of where America really stands. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna show you the facts, show you exactly what's going on and why I believe we're gonna be walking into a scenario that's gonna reshape everything we know about America over the next year or two. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube will share this content, educate more people about what's going on in our economy. If you'd like to fix your credit, to position yourself for funding, maybe to invest in distressed real estate, get a business loan to buy a business, buy a work truck, you have some intention of getting a line of credit to invest when you know we're walking into a situation where we're gonna start seeing a lot more desperate sellers due to this cost of living crisis, you know, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in a credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for Monday for tomorrow. Take a look at this. So they go on to say that this would cost, it would, it would take nearly $40,000 away from every American family who's already losing thousands of dollars every year due to the record high inflation crisis. Now, when, when you look at this, they say that this proposal, an unprecedented 86.6% trillion in new spending over the next decade, and you can see you know, the URL here, .gov website, right? Over the next, de next decade, increasing debt held by public by 72%. 72%. Now, right now, it's fascinating how much we're just sending money everywhere and how much money we're just printing into existence. We just basically gave away another $95 billion you know, yesterday, right? Yesterday, one hour ago, the House swiftly approves a $95 billion aid, right? $95 billion. Then you start looking at where consumers are before all of this actually takes foot. Right? So you have data checking consumers struggle on grocery prices, credit card debt, and retire. Americans have racked up a trillion dollars in credit card debt. That's actually okay. Is it okay? And it's more than a trillion. That was you know, about a month and a half ago. Now it's over 1.1 trillion. So consumers are, look at this, Klarna, a new non-credit card could charge interest rates up to 34%. 34%. There's a lot of new pop-up businesses right now saying, you know what, if you, if you don't have enough money to make it to payday, We'll spot you, we'll advance you a day, two days, three days. And the interest rates that they're charging, an annualized 300% interest for people that simply can't pay them back on time, I mean, this just rolls up like a payday loan, like an installment loan. So we're gonna start seeing all these different predatory loan products taking advantage of consumers as inflation gets worse, and it continues to get worse. Now, what's fascinating is that the, as of now, the total household debt is 17.3 trillion entering 2024 is a new high for the US. So they say the economy is booming, but how can it be when you start to look at, you know, what's actually going on, where consumers really are? 
and you start to see the direction that we're going in the next year or two. I don't, I don't see how this is going to be, how this is going to allow people to live a prosperous life. Instead, what I think is going to happen is we're going to start seeing a lot of people being forced into a hard position and they are going to start downsizing from their homes because you can rent for about 50% of the cost of buying a home today. You're going to start seeing a lot of people getting priced out of their home as property insurance goes up, property taxes go up. You start to see repair costs on homes going up. People are going to start to reduce their expenses as much as they possibly can. And I think we're going to start seeing a domino-like effect which is gonna push us into a recession. Some are even saying a depression. You know, look at this, look how fast, it's almost like a frog in boiling water. You know, if this, a woman with $20 of groceries before going home to her $25,000 house in the 1980s. You know, before you could go to a restaurant, family of four, spend 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Now, a family of four, every time I take my wife and two kids out, it's 150 bucks everywhere. Everywhere is like 150 bucks. It's hundred dollars just to leave the house, right? So when you start to see this and you start to see where you know the average American is, how are we not gonna walk into a situation where we're gonna start seeing defaults skyrocket? We're already seeing this right now across the auto industry. Auto repossessions are at all time highs. You're starting to see foreclosures starting to pick up. Credit card defaults are at all time highs. All of this is happening and as that's happening, retirees are being pushed into a hard spot. So everybody is getting hit at the same time. So here's how I think this is all gonna play out. So will Social Security run out of money? Here's what could happen to your benefits if Congress doesn't act, right? This is all set 2034. They're gonna start seeing their benefits getting cut, right? Then you start to see this. You have Medicare, Part B, the largest liability with unfunded 99.5 trillion. Medicare Part D, for prescription drugs, we'll be missing 22.1 trillion. So security needs an additional 168, 68 trillion. So the total is 175.3 trillion in, uh, in unfunded liabilities, 175 trillion. You take that coupled with this 68 or $86 trillion in spending that they have planned, how does this not, how does this not walk us all into a really, really big crisis where our currency continues to fall in value? Not to mention that as of now, we have to sell a record 8.9 trillion of government debt will mature over the next year. See the first sharp low. Our government deficit in 2024 will be at 1.4 trillion according to CBO. And the Fed has been running down its balance sheet by $60 billion per month. The bottom line is that someone will need to buy more than 10 trillion in US government bonds in 2024. That is more than one third of US government debt outstanding and more than one third of US GDP. Repeat that trend every year for the foreseeable future. It's almost 11 trillion every year until 2030. So, you know, we have to sell basically another 60 trillion in debt to other countries that as of now are already selling off a lot of our debt. They don't want to be exposed to the US dollar. They're buying a lot of gold, right? So you start to see this trend. How does our living standard grow? I don't see it. I think it's gonna grow for the 1%. I think it's gonna grow for the people that have a lot of, you know, a lot of wealth, a lot of purchasing power, sure. But the 99% of the next couple of years are gonna get absolutely devastated. And that's why it's so important to understand what's really going on to make informed decisions based on this, not ignoring this. I mean, they're trying to push everyone to a four day work week to do the universal basic income. And look at this. So countries that have a four day work week, you have all these different countries that are introducing these four day work weeks, right? Then you have, Look at this, four day work week in Hong Kong, experts say firms are reluctant despite Singapore's move. The benefits of four day work week. Four day work weeks may be around the corner. This is all one week ago. France is piloting four, four day work week. Sorry, Bernie, four day work week is decades away. They, I believe they say this to normalize it to where people say, you know what, it's not anytime soon. But then you look at this. I mean, you start to, Steve Cohen says four day work week is coming out part of AI. Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase said the same exact thing, saying a three and a half day work week. Bill Gates, a lot of billionaires, Elon Musk, a lot of really, really wealthy, powerful people all talking about a four-day work week. And why would that be? Well, if you're working five days, you're a full-time employee. Full-time employees generally get health benefits and they get a lot of you know, 401k benefits, retirement plans. Three and a half, four-day work week, that's a part-time employee. That is a really big win for a large corporation, right? That is a very, very, very big win for a large corporation. Look at the last week and it just, you know, Last week, it's page after page after page talking about four-day work weeks, right? And a four-day work week could be coming as AI proliferates 
and these companies could capitalize, right? So you start seeing all these companies doing this. Now, how I see this all working out is the four day work week is gonna to start to be kind of the segue into universal basic income. And this topic is getting a lot of attention, especially you know now AI is threatening American jobs, could guarantee the income, provide a safety net, right? Same thing, if you put in one last week, you see the same exact scenario unfolding page after page after page talking about this. Is universal basic income a human right? Right? Even just having that conversation, California residents receive $500 a month, payments do you qualify? Now, look how far this has grown. In guaranteed income programs in American cities have surged over the past year, rising to 82 participating cities across 29 states this year. Right, This is 2022. And in 2021, it was 11 cities. So it went from 11 cities in 2021 to 82 cities in 2022 to now hundreds of cities throughout America are issuing some form of a pilot program on universal basic income. So you're kind of seeing this. Wall Street Journal, governments across the US are handing residents cash, no strings attached. So what do I think is gonna happen? I think a few things are gonna happen. I believe we are gonna start seeing massive spending bills start to you know, really ramp up over the next year or so. I believe the situation overseas, the money that we're sending, that is only gonna grow because I think that that scenario, that problem there is gonna get much, much, much worse. It's gonna push America to send more money. And so as that's happening, and you start to see this cost of living grow, you start to see this transition from fossil fuels to clean energy, you start to see all of these things, the cost of energy is gonna continue to go up. Everything I believe is gonna get more expensive here in America. And so when you look at the writing on the wall, if incomes are kind of softening, and yet inflation is getting worse, how do living standards get better? They don't, right? So what I think is gonna happen is I think it's gonna present a massive opportunity for investors to go out there and buy a lot of these repriced assets, especially because interest rates are not going down anytime soon. It's gonna be you know, like a chokehold in the US economy. So if you are someone thinking about investing, look at, look at the facts, look at what's happening. Make sure you have the income. You're building out a plan to have the income to be able to go out there and invest. I wish it wasn't the case. I wish $100,000 a year was you know, up middle class like it was just a few years ago. But I believe $250,000, $300,000 in 2026 is probably going to be you know, equivalent to making $125,000 now. Like, I think we're just going to start seeing this inflation crisis get a lot worse. They say that the average American family is spending $1,000 per month just in inflation cost. That's not taking into consideration all of these new changes. How would a universal basic income get funded? Right? How would all of this stuff get funded? Right? It would get funded through taxes. It would get funded through the American people. So drop below, let's have a conversation about this. I also believe we're gonna see a lot of really wealthy people buying second homes in different countries, buying and getting second passports, investor visas. I believe we're gonna start seeing a lot of people changing the way in which they look at home, right? Before home was America for many people, they're gonna start looking at the world as a, a global playing field. And they're gonna start building out teams, their businesses in accordance with that. Drop below, let's have a conversation. If you'd like to fix your credit, we would love to help you. At my company, greatcreditfast.com, that's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in a credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for Monday. And I'm not saying this to you know get anyone down. I'm, I'm saying this because I wanna see a lot of people succeed. But you know, it, it becomes a lot easier to succeed if you know where we're likely going, and you can build out a game plan based on that. Catch you next video.